Anthony Tilter. And once again, we welcome you all worldwide. And we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on NextSportsStar.com. Wow, what a lineup we've got for you tonight. Not one, not two, not three, but four unbelievable guests. Three players from MLS. Yes, three. We go to Toronto to talk with TFC's Jordan Hamilton in mere minutes. And then to the Windy City to talk with Chicago Fire Joey Calistri getting ready to take on TFC. And then we close it out at about 8.40 or so with Paolo Tornegi of Vancouver Whitecaps, their goalkeeper. We'll talk to him about the season so far, and we'll tee up the next game for the Whitecaps as well. And, of course, we will discuss Portugal on to the Euro final with a return guest, Jorge Neves of CIRV Radio here in Toronto. The Portuguese fans celebrating all over North America, especially here in Toronto. I'm sure in Boston. I'm sure in New York and in Montreal. And why not? They deserve it. They're in the finals. I don't want to hear any garbage about the style of play they have played, how weak it's looked. It doesn't matter. It comes down to wins and losses. They're in the final. End the story. End the story. Good luck to uh, Portugal in the final, Vancouver, uh, Vancouver in the next game tomorrow, it will be Germany taking on France, boy oh boy, Portugal will have their hands full with either one, either one, it'll be a massive, massive game, but joining us right now from TFC, the young star on the rise, Jordan Hamilton, Jordan Walker, my friend. Joining us right now live from TFC on the line is Canadian and TFC young star on the rise, Jordan Hamilton. Jordan, do we have you? Uh, this isn't Jordan, unfortunately. And it looks like we just got disconnected there. We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll try and get Jordan Hamilton to join us next right here on Red Card. Should I just set you free? Why is it that I lose? We're going to put a little bit of uh, rapini in there now that it's sauteed. You can use them right out of the bag frozen if you want, or you can take them out of the bag the night before, put them in a plate, and let them uh, thaw out. I like putting a little lemon juice in here. Rapini is full of vitamin C, it's folic acid, but it tastes great. Look at this. Look, look how beautiful this dish is. Enjoy. Look for D'Angelo Basket Fresh Rapini in your favorite supermarket. Today I'm going to show you how to make rice with rapini. It is an unbelievably simple dish. It's good for you. I'm going to take some D'Angelo extra virgin olive oil, put it in the pan, put a little bit of garlic. What's an Italian recipe without garlic? A little bit of oregano, some freshly ground pepper, a drop of salt, and for me, I like to put, this is optional, just a drop of red wine. And then I put a little bit of freshly diced tomatoes because they go great with everything. I'm gonna take a little bit of rapini because we want to saute it too. We want all of these ingredients to get connected. Look at that. Oh. So we're gonna take some rice. So I've parboiled this rice. This is so good for you, and this is so filling. Look at this, look at this, look at this. This is one of my favorite dishes with rapini in the world, look at that. In 60 seconds. Look for D'Angelo Basket Fresh Rapini in your favorite supermarket. Today what we're gonna do is, we're gonna join rapini and cipollini together with some new recipes. Today I'm gonna make you salmon alla cipollini with a little bit of rapini. We got some fresh salmon, which I cut myself. Beautiful. And put just a drop of Tabasco sauce, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and put just a little bit of rapini, and my favorite, cipollini. Oh, I love them. These onions are sweet. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of wine, and a drop of balsamic vinegar. I wish you could smell this. This is incredible. I'm gonna put just a drop of extra virgin olive oil in here. 
And this is a quick dish, and it's spectacular. Look how amazing that is. Rapini with cipollini and gorgeous salmon. Oh my God. Gangelo Basket Fresh Cipollini in your favorite supermarket. Life is timing, and timing is life. Things can change in a millisecond. Family is the most important thing in a man's life. Don't matter how many cars, how much cash, and how powerful he is. If he don't got no family, he's nothing. Mr. Traficante, what can I do for you? I owe you and your family so very much. I appreciate that you're meeting with me, but what I'm gonna tell you, you're probably gonna think I'm fucking crazy. I want this fucking Sonny Trafficante dead. He's costing us money. He's gotta be dead. What should we do? Let's just see how it plays out. I wanna be by myself tonight. You guys need to go? What exactly is going on? Senator wants people to leave. People gotta leave. Yeah, look, he's gonna be at the jazz club tonight. And I let my heart choose. Why do things get confused? Just because you refuse. And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Tolter. We apologize for the mix-up there. We're waiting for Joey Calistri of Chicago Fire to give us a call. He'll be joining us hopefully very soon. And then at about 8.15 or so, uh, Jordan Hamilton of TFC will join us. And then at 8.40 or so, from the Vancouver Whitecaps goalie, Paolo Tornegi. And mixed in between there, we'll have Jorge Neves of CIRV Radio here in Toronto. Portugal on their way to the finals. What a day it was. Ronaldo with a beautiful goal. And Portugal are in the final beating Wales easily today, controlling that second half. The first half it was give and take, but the better chances were, uh, I would say, for Portugal. But hey, keep your heads up, Wales. An unbelievable tourney. You should be proud of yourselves. Uh, Gareth Bale and the boys represented uh, themselves in Wales. Unbelievable. But right now, it's Portugal waiting for either Germany or France in uh, the final and boy oh boy will they have their hands full and i believe truly this will be the biggest test obviously in the final for portugal croatia was that first and major test they got by that i didn't th i didn't think uh, poland was much of a test and i didn't think anyone else uh, leading up to this game has been much of a test for portugal but they will have that test a major one added either the world cup champs from brazil germany or france the host nation and it should be un believable for either a one of them uh, to um, uh, to go up against Portugal. So we just got confirmation uh, for Joey Calistro. We're going to give him a call. We'll take a very quick commercial break and we'll have Joey Calistri on of Chicago Fire. Stay tuned right here on Red Card. Make sure that fucking piece of shit is dead. Came here to ask you for a favor. Anything. I'm going to go away. I don't know for how long. And I want you to take care of my family. I want you to give me a word of honor that you're going to look after them. You were with this guy all your life. And you betrayed him. Yeah, you delivered him to me. Can I trust you? Because if I can't trust you, I have to come back and kill you. to God that I would never tell anybody because I don't want nobody to think I'm crazy.
At Rabino, Rabino, and Rabino, we got your back. I'm Anthony Rabino from Rabino, Rabino, and Rabino. There was four Rabinos, and one of the Rabinos is not with us anymore. I'm with my brother and partner, Vito Rabino. And I'm Vito Rabino of Rabino, Rabino, and Rabino. If you're hurt in a car, don't call that other guy. Call Rabino, Rabino, and Rabino, because we never lose a case. Hi, I'm Richard Lett, and I was in an accident. The insurance company tried to make me sign for You know that it's been so hard, I tried to tell you in that car. Welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Toterran. Joining us right now from Chicago Fire, a guy that is on the rise. A lot of people have taken notice, Joey Calistri. Joey, welcome, my friend. Thanks for having me, guys. Pleasure's all mine, Joey. Let's talk about it. A big game coming up for you guys, taking on TFC here uh, in Toronto. It should be a good matchup. TFC ravaged by injuries. No Bradley, no Josie Altidore. But you guys right now are finding a rhythm. You're starting to get an identity under the, your new head coach. Talk about this game coming up against TFC. Yeah, I mean, every game for us is, uh, you know, like a cup final pretty much. That's the kind of mentality that we have at this point. And, uh, you know, yeah, we got a little bit of momentum going right now. Uh, we've been starting to, to put together some, some really good games recently, so we're definitely looking to continue that in Toronto, and they're going to be a tough team, obviously. You know, a conference rival uh, on the road can be a real tough game. You know, it doesn't matter you know, if they have a couple guys out or not. We know that they're going to you know, put out a really tough team, and you know, we're looking forward to it. Joey, Chicago is a wonderful footy city. It's been a wonderful place to play World Cup qualifying games, big tournaments on and on. But the responsibility, I'm sure, is on your shoulders and all your teammates to get this team back into the playoffs and into the glory days of finals in MLS. How important is that, that you guys start to really focus now in this downstretch that the playoffs is vital for this club this year? Yeah, no, it's hugely important. And, you know, as a, as a homegrown guy who's from, you know, the area and grew up as a fan of the fire, you know, I, nobody wants that more than me. And, uh, you know, you could tell that there's – there's a group here that really is committed to doing that and to getting the team back to where it used to be. And, you know, beginning of the year, results can always go our way, but we're starting to find our way right now. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep that going. And I think that, you know, if everybody keeps putting in the effort that we're putting in and putting in the work every day, then I think we're going to be okay. Joey, your time in PDL, I'm sure, like many that have spent time in PDL, was so important for your development. Talk about playing in the PDL and talk about uh, what you took away from that to now being up in the show here in MLS that you learned? Yeah, no, it's huge. It's, it's uh, really big, and it's a great experience, I think, to, uh, to kind of measure yourself against some of the best, you know, players in your age group and, you know, the college-age guys who are home for the summer. I think, uh, you know, staying connected to your hometown club is really important as well, and uh, you have to have some connections there, and you get to prove yourself and, you know, hopefully get invited to first-team training and stuff like that. So it's just a great, it's a great system where you could, get important and uh, competitive games in the summer when you're you know, in the offseason a little bit. Joey, you came from the NCAA. I've said this for the last five years. I've had a ton of players on from the NCAA, whether Maryland, North Carolina, you name it, first-round picks like Kyle Larna visited our show, uh, all sorts of Maryland players from Graham Zussi, on and on. It has been the pipeline for MLS. You come from Northwestern. How important was that in your growth and development to play in the NCAA? Well, right now, players are coming all over the world, not just North America. So you're tested week in and week out with some of the best. Yeah, it's definitely a little different how we do it here in that you go to college for four years before you, you know, sign a contract a lot of the time. But um, I think it's really important for gaining maturity and experience, um, you know, having to grind out games and tough environments and stuff like that. I think it's really important. And, you know, I mean, I think our two teams are a perfect example of that. you got a lot of guys that I've, you know, played against in college, and, you know, Sabasa Endo, Jake Chapman, Lavoletta, Haglin, you know, on your team, and then, you know, obviously a bunch of guys on our team. So it's very evident that, you know, college soccer can produce some, some quality players. Joey, let's talk about MLS a little bit before we let you go. Obviously, the Pacific Northwest with the Whitecaps, the Sounders, and the Timbers champs is an unbelievable atmosphere to play a game in that area. Then you go to New York with the two, LA, uh, the two New York teams there, it's uh, unbelievable, the atmosphere in those pockets. Talk about it, and where do you like uh, visiting as a player now that you're with Chicago? Yeah, I mean, it's been 
it's been incredible, you know, for me in my first year. That's kind of been one of the coolest parts is playing in front of, you know, massive crowds like that that are just insanely dedicated to the game. So I thought for me Portland was, was really cool to play in. Um, their fans are just incredible, and they're completely behind the team. And then Vancouver is another really cool environment too as well. So that area is really good. And then Red Bulls was another uh, – Another good crowd, so all over the country you're getting really good crowds. Let's talk about your head coach, a guy that is new to MLS but no stranger in Europe. He's done some wonderful things with some young guys back there. They raved about this hiring. Uh, they were thinking outside of the box, your GM and president, when they hired uh, your young coach there to take over. What have you learned from him, and what has he said to you that he expects from you in uh, this uh, important year for this franchise? Yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot from them just from uh, – you know, little pointers when he takes me aside during training and tells me about a little way I could change my run or alter it so that, you know, I could be in on goal instead of going at a defender. But, um, but yeah, just those little kind of details that I might not have known before but he has kind of opened my eyes to have been really important for me. And then, um, yeah, no, I know he's, he's great with young guys, so it's, it's really it's been cool for me and the rest of the rookies to kind of have him there to guide us through the process and, you know, he, he's very clear that he expects us to, to help the team. And, you know, we're not just rookies, we're a member of the team. And I think that's been really helpful because, you know, a lot of the guys, the younger guys, are able to step up, put in some minutes, and, and do a pretty good job. Joey, just before we let you go, you're living the dream that a lot of North American kids would love to live. It's uh, playing in MLS, traveling all over North America, uh, eating in some of the best restaurants, staying in some of the best hotels, playing in some of the best of facilities all over North America. Obviously, there have been some people along this journey to help get where you're at. Has there been a coach that you want to thank, a parent, a friend, a sibling, who has stuck by you from day one and believed in you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, i got to mention my parents. They're incredible. I mean, I wouldn't be, you know, anywhere close to where I am without them and their, uh, their support, you know, for, you know, 18 years before I head to college, and then, you know, they're at every game in college, so... It's just incredible to have that support section of, of my family. And then coaches, you know, through the academy system, guys like Tony Keyes, Larry Sunderland, guys that helped shape me into the player I am today have been really helpful. And then obviously at Northwestern, the same. And as we let you go, Joey, talk to the kids out there. We have a lot of kids that watch this show and a lot of kids that are down on their confidence because their coaches uh, want to win that $2 trophy, that $2 medal, want to win those championships and really not develop them. And they're on that bench and they're lacking that confidence, but they want to be like Joey Calistri. They want to live that dream. What would you like to say to them? Well, I'll just tell them that throughout my two years that I played Fire Academy, uh, I was never a regular starter for the academy. I always came off the bench. And, uh, you know, there were times where coaches would come up and say that it was too late for me after practice if I was, like, out working on, you know, individual skills or something like that. So just keep having that drive. You know, I, you know, I made it here because of my work ethic. And obviously that can happen for a lot of other kids that they just keep at it and they pursue their dreams. Joey, you're a class act. We wish you nothing but success the rest of the way. Good luck against TFC, and I'm sure we'll see your name on the score sheet throughout the MLS season. Thanks so much again for making time out of your busy schedule, my friend. No problem. Thanks for having me. All Ch the best. Chicago Fire, young star on the rise. Keep your eye on this kid. I've kept my eye on him for a couple years going back to PDL. Joey Calistri. Quick commercial break, coming back from TFC, Jordan Hamilton, and then at 8.40 from Vancouver Whitecaps, goalkeeper Paulo Tornegi. Stay tuned right here on Red Card. We had some fun. You know that it's been but then I talked to Rubino and Rubino and Rubino, and they got me all the money I needed. The insurance company is always trying to screw you. We are against the system. We are for you. We're going to... I tried to tell you in that car. Ba, 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 now. Ba, 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 now. And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Toterra. Thanks again to Chicago Forward, young star on the rise, Joey Calistri, joining us. Good luck to Joey and Chicago Fire. Taking on our next guest, the young star on the rise for TFC and hopefully for Canada, Jordan Hamilton. Jordan Walker, my friend. Thank you, thank you. 
Pleasure is all mine. Jordan, let's talk about it. I was there Saturday with my whole family, and I couldn't feel much more happier for you getting that goal. Obviously, a lot of the legwork done by the big atomic ant, my paisano there, Jovinko. Talk about the confidence you must have right now after getting that goal and playing minutes that are important for this team. Uh, you know, uh, Seba made a great run, and I was luckily there to follow him up. Uh, off a great save by Stephen Fry, so it was a it was a really good team goal, and and uh, I, I obviously feel uh, confident in myself. I've always been uh, pretty confident in my abilities, but it, it's a uh, it's a a great honor to be able to play with the first team on a on a fair, fairly uh, regular basis now, and I'm just trying to keep my T-shirt on my back. Jordan, I, I got to tell you, I followed you last year closely with USL TFC2 team, and, and there's something different with you this year, especially playing a lot of first minutes, uh, first team minutes with uh, the big squad. You seem confident, you seem relaxed, but you understand the responsibility and how important this is for you right now in your career. Have you taken everything in and have you said, this is my chance, I'm not going to let it go? Yeah, you know, uh, last year there was, there were certain things that were expected of me that I wasn't bringing on a on an everyday basis, and uh, since preseason this year, I've really been uh, pushing myself every day, and and uh, in the off season, I pushed myself really hard, so it's it's really paying off now, and uh, yeah, I just I feel great out there, and I, I've been waiting so long, uh, all the way back to my uh, first preseason with Aaron Venter as the head coach, and. I've just been waiting for a chance, and uh, I would not let it pass me. So I'm doing everything I can. And Jordan, Coach Vanny also said that you have warranted more time, more playing minutes. It doesn't matter who comes back. That's got to be outstanding to hear your head coach say that you've earned the minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, I, uh, I had a talk with Greg about four weeks ago before any of this happened, and, and he told me what he expects of me, and I've been trying to do that and more, so... Uh, I really appreciate his communication with, with all the players, and uh, I'm really happy right now. So, 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 Jordan, talk about that. You said it, communication. You're a professional player, and many professional players worldwide always want communication. And I always believe, as a head coach, especially in today's game, you need to have that door open to talk to the young players to explain what you want. And then if you don't get what you want after explaining it, well, too bad. How important is that for you as a player to have that communication with head coach Greg Vanny? Uh, it, it's, it's not just uh, uh, Coach Greg. It's the whole staff at, at uh, Toronto FC. The, the doors are always open, and you can always walk in, and, and if something's, you need to know something or if you need to ask something, they're always uh, ready to communicate. And I think that's a huge part of being a professional is, is knowing what's expected of you on an everyday basis, not just, some game time or uh, one practice here and there, you've got to really bring it every day. So, I mean, it's great. Uh, it's a great uh, family environment at Toronto FC, and everyone communicates with everyone. Let's talk about some of the guys that you're surrounded with this year. Will Johnson, Michael Bradley, Drew Moore. These are warriors. These are veterans that understand MLS. These are guys that in training sessions don't take a second or a minute off. How great is that to see these guys bringing it during training and in games? And how important is it that it's rubbed off on you that you know you can't? Because these guys will come right in your grill house, Jordan, and they'll say, hey, let's get it going here. Yeah, I mean, it, it still happens. Uh, everyone, uh, every one of the older guys and the more experienced guys have uh, been pushing me for since they've been around. Uh, uh, Michael Bradley personally takes time out of his day all the time to tell me what to do better and and uh, and tell me how I can uh, help the team more. And guys like uh, Will Johnson and Drew are are probably the most experienced MLS players on the team, and they're. They're pushing themselves to their to their limits every day, so it's it's really great to see that nobody really takes a day off. Jordan, you and I live and breathe the city of Toronto. We know it, you know, quite well. But the support is unbelievable since day one. You've traveled in other parts of the world. You've traveled in different cities in MLS early on in your young career. 
But again, it's unbelievable the support that these TFC supporters show you and all the squad as they did after you got that goal. It's, it's just got to uplift that squad, knowing that you're going to have 25, almost 30,000 every game. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I still, to this day, think that Toronto is the greatest city in the world, and, and our fans are very high up there with the greatest in the world, in my uh, humble opinion. So I, I just, after that goal, I, I just, I just felt like I had to had to go um, had to go run run towards them. So I, I always try to include them because they're they're chanting all game long and and they're always there no matter win or lose or losing streak or winning streak, they're always there, so it's it's good. As a Canadian kid, Jordan, let's put all the cards on the table. How great does it feel as a Canadian kid, a local boy, to start to score, to play important minutes, and to show everyone in MLS that Canadian guys can play with anyone. I mean, it means everything to me. Of course, like uh, being able to play for my for my own city and and have so many friends and family in the crowd and just just feeling like like I'm at home out there. You know, it's it's an amazing feeling. I can, I honestly wish I could describe it, but I honestly can't. It's just it's just surreal almost. Let's talk about some of the other places you visited in MLS. Orlando, uh, maybe the New York, one of the New York teams. The atmospheres there are unbelievable as well. Orlando packs them in, unbelievable, 40, 50,000. How do you focus on the job at hand that you need to do? Because obviously when there's 30, 40, 50,000, it could get a little bit unnervy for you. Yes, for sure, but uh, I just I just try to try to focus on, on doing the simple things correct and working hard, and then my game will flow to me. I think I think another thing uh, I was trying to do too much maybe earlier in my career rather than focusing on on uh, just completing the simple task and, and working hard first and foremost. And I've, I've really taken that on this year, and, and it's really worked out for me. So, so I just when I'm away, I just, I just focus on the game, and I don't really – notice it's, it's hard to explain because it, it would seem like it's nervy and stuff but it, it's really not like you just focus on on the game and, and your teammates behind you and it, it comes it comes fairly easy to to just do your job let's go back jordan obviously there has to be in some time some days that you were thinking mentally is is this it is this my last kick at the can here am i going to get another shot the confidence level, I'm sure, at a couple times, if not one for sure last year, was maybe not as high as you would have liked it to be. Who, who did you, you know, talk to? Who did you call? Who did you confide in? Was there someone that believed in you, that you talked to, that you could grasp uh, what they were saying, and, and you put it all out there and you said, yeah, I need to do this? Who, who was that? Uh, actually, uh, uh, Julian de Guzman and Dwayne De Rosario always, were always telling me, Last year, things that I need to do, and and I spent a couple a couple uh, sessions with Dero in the in the off season. So he's really he's really uh, helped me as well with uh, the transition from the second to the first team or first to the second team. So I mean, last year obviously it didn't go the way I wanted, but it's behind me now and. And I'm just looking forward to the next game. So let's talk about the next game. Chicago Fire coming. And this is a real big test for you guys to get valuable points because you want to keep moving up the ladder and not down, obviously, with a lot of the injuries. How important is it that you guys strike first and get the goal like you did? And then, unfortunately, a, a mental lapse right away. Seattle comes back and puts one in the back of your net. But you striked first. And I think that's key and that's important. And you guys are hard to beat once you strike first. Yeah, it's, of course, uh, everyone, everyone uh, on the team is focused on on scoring first and and really bringing bringing the game to the op opposition, that, especially at home. And uh, tomorrow, I think, I mean, against Seattle, I think we we were the better team, and uh, I think most would agree. But we, at the end of the day, the that's football, and and you've got to take your chances, and. That, uh, tomorrow we've just got to go out and focus on the game plan and, and execute, really. George, just before we let you go, obviously growing up in these parts, uh, you must have played for a youth club that still has a lot of uh, wonderful memories in your mind and in your heart, and there had to be some youth coaches who you want to thank that 
uh, where you're at today wouldn't be without their help. Uh, who helped you along the way, Jordan? Was there a coach that believed in you? Was there a parent, a sibling? Who believed in you? Who never gave up on Jordan Hamilton? Uh, there's ac actually a couple. My first, my it goes all the way back to my, my first couple of coaches, which was uh, Lance, Lance in Malvern and uh, actually Dwayne DiRosario's dad. Oh, Tony! Tony DiRosario was, was one of my early coaches. And uh, as as it's actually funny as a as a little eight year old kid, if he had this uh, this drill where you would have to pass the ball in between his hands, and he would call it the passing lane. <laughs> and as as an eight year old kid, if you don't if you don't hit the hit in between his hands, he would take your ball and kick it as far as he could, and you have to go chase after it. So that was, that's always that's always going to be a memory in my head, and also in my rep. In my rep uh, experiences, I had uh, uh, Rupert at, at Ajax and uh, Dino at Markham, who who really helped me. And uh, yeah, just growing up, and then I moved over to the provincial team, and a uh, coach that really believed in me there was Patrick Tobo and, and Ian Skitch. And uh, at TSC, I would say uh, Jim Brennan really believed in me in my abilities and and Anthony Capitosto, so those, those two really, really pushed me towards the first team. Well, you mentioned a lot of great human beings and a, a lot of great coaches. I know each and every one of them, and it's great that you give them some credit because uh, they're very humble people. Each and every one of those guys you mentioned, I know them personally, and, and all they want is, uh, is a smile on your face to see you succeed, and they're happy. I know that for a fact. Jordan, We'll close it out and, and, and close it out with this. And I want you to talk to the kids out there. I want you to talk to the kids out there uh, that are watching, that are listening, that might be struggling in confidence, sitting on the bench because their coach doesn't believe in their talents. Their coach wants to win the Ontario Cup or the OISL title and could care less about developing that player. But they want to live the dream like Jordan Hamilton. What do you want to say to those kids? I would say just, just find the right environment for themselves and, and just keep working hard just because one coach doesn't believe in you that that means that you're not going to make your dreams come true I've had coaches that that don't believe in, in my abilities and and I've sat on the bench many times just every time I got on the field I just try to do what would what would get me to the next level which was score goals and, and unfortunately I've, I've, I've somewhat made it to where I want to be right now and and I work still have to work hard every day to to keep to keep getting that opportunity. So I would tell them just just follow, keep following their dreams and and they they know within themselves what they have to do. And and just because uh, you don't play every game or or you don't you're not in the in the main drills in practice or something like that, that it's not an opportunity to prove that you deserve to be, so that's what I would tell them. Jordan, on a personal note, you're a class act. You've always taken time to say hello to me after a game, before a game, wherever, you always took time to say hello. And I got to tell you, watching that game in the press box of the TFC president, Bill Manning, with my wife and two sons, and I thank Bill for inviting us. It was a real class act and a gesture on his part. When you scored, I gave a massive high five to Bill Manning, and I said, Canada's Jordan Hamilton scores for TFC. God bless you. Good luck with TFC. We'd love to see you play for Canada, hopefully in the World Cup qualifiers as well. Keep the focus, man. Keep the focus and good luck. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That is Jordan Hamilton of TFC, a young player on the rise for Canada and for TFC. We'll take a quick commercial break. Coming back, as I said, we'll talk to Paulo Tornegi, goalkeeper of the Vancouver Whitecaps. Just before that, Jorge Neves of CIRV. He will talk about Portugal on to the finals of Euro. Stay tuned right here on Red Card. It's gonna work up somehow. You deserve. So I was in a supermarket and I threw some water on the ground so I could fall. I'm, I mean, there was water on the ground mm -hmm. and I slipped and my back hurts. So I can't do everything that I normally do. Mm -hmm. What do you normally do? Nothing. The insurance company don't f with us. No, with us they don't f because we we apply the old system of taking care of you first and then never. If the insurance company knows 
that you're represented by Rabino, 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 and Rabino. They're gonna pay. You're gonna sign a check. You're gonna sign a check. You're gonna sign a check. And my you're brother will check. You're gonna sign a check. You're gonna sign a check. If you're in an accident, the first call you're gonna make, don't call your mother, don't call your father, call Rabino, Rabino, and Rabino. Believe me, we, we the have insurance a company needs a doctor after we deal with that. We get the best track record of any lawyer. You look us up, Rabino, Rabino, Rabino. Case after case after case. We win because we think of you. And if you're a good looking broad, we're gonna we get you a better deal. Always the best deals. If you're a good looking broad. If you're a good looking broad, the best deals. If you are. Bye, 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 Welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony Totera. Thanks again to TFC forward Jordan Hamilton joining us as well from Chicago Fire. Joey Calisto, Chicago, taking on TFC. What a game it will be Saturday at 7.30. But what a game it was for Portugal today, beating Wales. The atmosphere was electric all over the city of Toronto and Mississauga, for that matter. And it will be tense come Sunday in the final. Joining us once again, Jorge Neves of CIRV Radio here in Toronto. Jorge, welcome. Hey, Anthony, how are you? Uh, better yet, how are you, Jorge? Well, I just got home from the party. It's <laughs> massive on St. Clair, on Little Portugal, around Boundary and Washington. It's, it's amazing. And, and I got to tell you, I tweeted this out. I couldn't be happier for the beautiful people of Portugal, the country, but also the people here in Toronto, in Canada because these are wonderful, hard-working people. And let's talk about it. What a win it was today. But i got to tell you, Jorge, I have been defending Portugal now for the last two weeks. People have been taking shots at me left, right, and center because they say it has been a poor style of play that Portugal is now in the final. And I can't believe we're going to see Portugal in the final. My response simply to them is this, and I'd like you here to hear you, is it's about wins and losses. I don't care how they do it. They're in the final, and they could win it all. Who cares? Because if they win it all, they're not going to put a little asterisk on the trophy that says, by the way, Portugal won, but they played garbage. Your thoughts? Well, I agree with you. The most important thing is to win the games. And like uh, Jose Mourinho used to uh, tell, if you are playing in a final, you play to, to win it, not just to play. So the reason is to be there and to win. And I think it was like, this from the beginning from Portugal. What matters is to win the games, no matter for how much, how how you play. If you play badly, if you don't play um, too too good. But the, the most important thing is the win. And if you notice, um, we are changing since the beginning. It's a more evolving team. The the, the, port, the way that Portugal the Portugal plays plays more like a team and not like uh, an individual that can uh, um, do some magic and score a goal. No, we are playing as the team, so everybody attacks, everybody defends, uh, and the group is strong, it's united, and we show it today. And Ronaldo showed it today, he showed it the last game, but for me, look, I'm going to tell you, Jorge, as much as everyone uh, says that Ronaldo and Messi are the two best players in the world, right now for me, the best player on Portugal has been since he came in and made a difference has been the teenager, uh, uh, Ronaldo Sanchez. This kid, every time he touches the ball, he's explosive. He's electric, he's alive, and he gives energy and breath to the rest of the team. We know what Nani's about. We know what Ronaldo's about. We know about Alves. But we never knew how good this youngster could be on, on the world stage as he's shown. To me, if this guy plays the way he's played the last three games, Portugal will beat either France or Germany. Yeah, it's a beautiful story because um, last year he was playing for the the B squad from uh, Benfica, and then suddenly this beginning of the the, the last season, uh, we, he was calling to the to, to the first team, uh, and as soon as he starts playing, that's it. All the game from Benfica needs to pass through the the, the feet of um, Renato Sanchez, and then he gets to the. Um, a national team. Uh, he scored the first goal during this um, Hero Cup. Uh, he became the, the most youngest player to to represent the first team in Portugal. He got transferred to Bayern Munich for 35 million euros, 
and there are some um, points in the contract that say that the the money can reach 80 million so uh it's uh, an explosive uh, explosive uh, player and he's doing such a good job with confidence uh, uh by the way he scored one of the penalty kicks uh against uh, Poland uh, after Ronaldo and he asked to the coach to do it and this shows to me the confidence that this youngster has, the courage he has, the, 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 the attitude that I, I don't care, I'm ready to take it, let's go. And I love to see this from the youngster because if I'm not mistaken, Jorge, wasn't it Ronaldo that had to convince, I forget which player it was, uh, to take the penalty kick? Uh, yeah, and that to, me showed, that to me showed the leadership of Ronaldo once and for all. He talked him to be calm, to take the kick. But the kid Sanchez says, give me the ball, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, he's doing good. He's uh, an amazing human being, very humble guy, and he's on top of the world right now. Jorge, just before we let you go, so it's either Germany or France. Tomorrow, everyone in Portugal will be glued to see who they play. But to me, let's finish off on the Portugal page talking about a guy who wasn't in the lineup, Pepe. I believe if he's healthy and he's ready to go, this guy will make a big time difference for this game and for this squad. Bruno Alves did fine, but Pepe is at another level. Agree or disagree? 100% sure with you. Uh, Pepe is uh, the, the center of the, the defense uh, in Portugal. Uh, Jose Font is playing uh, really good b beside him, and Bruno Alves did a good job today, but Pepe, uh, I, I don't know, Pepe is uh, Pepe. He's confident. He, he, he brings such uh, such toughness to the to the game his character his emotions and that uh, um is contagious for the rest of the team but uh today bruno alves was really good but pep if he's okay he's going to play in the final he's going to give everything that he wants and he has inside him to to make this uh, an historical game and and i think all the players since the beginning, and it's funny, I don't know if uh, you know about this information. Since the beginning, the national coach, Fernando Santos, um, when he uh, was asked by the reporters, so uh, how far can Portugal uh, go during this tournament? And uh, he said something like this, I told my family that I want to just, uh, I'm going to return home just on the um, 11th of July. So since the, the, first, the first day, he was confident that Portugal had a team to go to the finals. And he, in the, middle, in the middle of the tournament, he was asked the same question. He replied the same thing. I already told you guys. I told my family. I want to see you just on July, on July 11th. And he made the promise. And he's going <laughs> to do it. He's going to return to Portugal just on the July 11. Absolutely. Bravo for Santos and saying that. We got 20 seconds. In 20 seconds or less, who do you want to face, Germany or France? I'll give you my quick take. I'd rather you face Germany because I believe with the host nation, France, it will be too much of a massive, massive challenge and it will be a, an unbelievable uh, game for them to overcome and win. If they play Germany, which I believe are beatable, I like their chances more. Who do you want to face? I want to face France. Wow. We have, we have some... Uh, some issues to, to resolve with them from the, the last competitions and uh, especially all the hardworking Portuguese people that live in France, they, they deserve it because there's been some uh, backlash, some words, some nasty words against uh, the Portugal team in France, against uh, the Portuguese uh, players. So we have, we have something to, to prove and we, we want France and we need in France, in their house. You, you know what? A a and you know what? This brings back to a story. I have to close out with this. I'm going to go on record right now and saying the Portugal will win the European Championship. And you know why I say that? Because that story was exactly told in 2006 in the World Cup by Marcello Lippi, Alessandro Del Piero, of all the Italians that live in Germany that were disrespected, treated awfully, and they wanted to win it for them and obviously for themselves and the people in Italy. So with that story alone, Jorge, I believe the Portugal will now win it all come Sunday. So good luck to them and enjoy the match, my friend. And we really appreciate you taking time to join us.
No problem, anytime. Jorge Neves of C yeah, Jorge Neves of CIRV Radio. Quick commercial break. We're headed off to Vancouver to talk with Whitecaps goalkeeper Paulo Tornegi. Stay tuned right here on Red Card. Accident. Talk to Rubino and Rubino. And Rubino. So I would like to get like a gazillion dollars. Can you get me a gazillion dollars? Because I'm Uncle Sammy. And Sammy says, if you're in an accident, call Rubino, Rubino, and Rubino. Remember, if your car crashes or you slip and fall, call Rubino, Rubino, and Rubino. I really want that billion dollars. You're going to get it. It's Friday night. Got a fucking problem. It's the old days. Come on. Come on, don't bust saying anything. I don't want to go. Come on, man. We'll do jiggle. We'll do jiggle. We'll have fun. Get up there and sit in this long way. Things you make me fucking do. Come on. I did my best fucking old lady. Get up on this stage. Come on. Let's have some fun. Okay, who fucking laughs? Well, you always make me do things I don't want to do. <laughs> you're kidding me. You don't want to sing what a song, you, Sonny? What are you doing? You're sing, right? You don't sing. You don't know the song. Sit down. Go watch the fucking cheese. Come on. Sit down. Come on. Sing. Come on. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Wait. Whoa! I'm just a gigolo. And everywhere I go, oh, people know the part I'm playing. They fall in a dead cell and eat romance. Ooh, what to say? And there will come a day when you will pass away. What will they say about me? When the end comes, I know I'm just a gigolo. Life goes on without me. I'm just a gigolo, and everywhere I go, gigolo. the people know the part I'm playing. Gigolo, gigolo, gigolo. Pay for every dance, sell a new romance. Ooh, to say it. Oh, there will come a day when you will pass away. What will they say about me? When the end comes, I know I'm just a gigolo. Life goes on without me, cause. Can we just let it go? Is there something I should know? Am I really blind? Or is it love I can't find? And welcome back to Red Card. I'm your host, Anthony <laughs> Tolterra. Thanks again to Jordan Hamilton of TFC joining us, as well as Joey Calistri of Chicago Fire getting ready to take on TFC on the weekend. It should be a good matchup. But joining us right now, our return guest to our show. We had him on before, Paulo Tornegi, Vancouver Whitecaps goalkeeper. Paulo, welcome. Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. And hopefully you're doing well, Paulo, enjoying a lot of the Euro action. Before we talk about MLS and Vancouver Whitecaps, let's talk about the run that Italy have. And you saw Portugal winning today. What's your thoughts on how this Euro has played out, Paulo? Yeah, well, I think for, you know, as Italian, you know, I was uh, very excited about Italy because we knew that this year, you know, the team uh, wasn't like as good as we are using the past, you know, because we, we lack a little bit of players with uh, very good quality, but we show a lot of character, a lot of discipline, and I think, you know, the team make, uh, made the uh, whole Italian proud. Paulo, let's talk about now the MLS season. Obviously, we're getting closer and closer uh, to the midway point and a lot of big points, a lot of big games coming up. Your squad this year has a lot of pressure on them uh, to not only get into the playoffs but go deeper than they did last year. Head coach Carl Robinson under a lot of pressure. How are you guys handling the pressure that is expected of you guys to get to a semifinal or even the finals this year? Yeah, well, of course, it's a, it's a pressure actually that we put uh, to ourselves because, you know, uh, last two years we, we had a, such a great season. So now everyone, you know, is looking at Vancouver White Cup as a, a team that is very, very good and can win the championship. So it's something that, uh, you know, we did good in the past. So that's 
that's why now everyone is looking at us. But we we don't have to 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 forget that we are still a young team with good players. But you know, we have to everyone uh, has to work hard. All the eleven guys in the field, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, you know good good results. Paulo, we had Matias Laba here in Toronto for a bit of time, and what a pleasure it was to watch him here. But I don't think MLS really understands what a gem this player is. I, I love watching him in that midfield. He's so smart defensively, but he can also chip in a bit uh, offensively with a goal here and there. Talk about this youngster, how important he is for that midfield. And he's only, I think, 23 or 24 years of age. I believe this guy has so much more uh, to give here in MLS and maybe even in Europe. Yeah, you know, you you are. I'm I'm agree with you like a hundred percent. You know, because uh, Mati is, uh, is really, I think, the heart of the team. You know, for the position that he's playing, but also like his mentality. And I think, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't help the fact that he's a, a defensive midfielder. You no, know? so that kind of position, you know, it, it's hard to 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 be impressed to, uh, watching a game because you are usually impressed by you know the guy that scores. The guys that make the the last pass or the goalkeepers making the save, you know, that kind of position, you know, it's, it's tough to play. But Matt is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great guy. First, you know, it's always you know put his hundred percent, and it's, it's very good, you know. It's a it's a, a defending midfielder that I think will be great also in a, in a high level in Europe. But we are lucky to have him in, in Vancouver. You no, know? he just play in Toronto. We are we are lucky to have him here. And hopefully he's going to stay for a long time here. Paulo, you got a good mix on this squad. You got some veterans like Blas Perez. You got some young guys like uh, Parker. We mentioned Laba, uh, Russell Tiber. Uh, and, and you got a, a coach that understands the league. He's played in the league before. Everything is there for you guys to have success. But obviously, when the whistle is blown to start the game, all that is thrown out the window. How important is it? that there's one ingredient that you're starting to notice on some of the teams in MLS, and that's, that's a unity. That's an understanding of everything that needs to take place from the beginning to the end about giving 90 minutes full out. Yeah, you know, right now there are many teams that have uh, their own identity in the field, so that's why, you know, uh, it's important that everyone you know, knows uh, uh, his role in the team, you know, here in, at the World Cup, we are trying to to build, you know, a young team uh, with very, you know, exciting team with uh, a lot of energy, uh, especially when we have the ball, but also when we lose the ball, we are trying always to to get the ball back as soon as we can to try to to be uh, to be dangerous. So that's that's what we are trying to to do this year. And of course, you know, we are lacking a little bit of consistency during the during the game and also during the the weeks. But you know now it's, it's the real time that uh, it's crucial for for the league because the second half it's uh, it's when it's matter because you know you play a lot of games with uh, your own conference team so that's uh, that's the moment that it's really it's, it's really important. Paulo, just before we let you go, you talked about identity. This is something I don't see from many teams in MLS yes, uh, yet. You know, Pirlo mentioned it, Kaká mentioned it. I spoke to a couple players from Colo Colo, a club in Chile that were here in Toronto on the weekend, and every one of those people have said it's too fast, it's too quick, it's too, it's almost like track and field. There's no rhythm, there's no calmness, there's no play in the midfield. How important is that for the progression, the development of this league? that the game slows down, Paolo. Yeah, I know for sure, but I think if you look at the teams that uh, they are with uh, a lot of years with the, with the same coach, uh, for example, you know, the Galaxy or the um, Sporting KC, for example, are the first that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking right now, they have their own identity. So I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit of time. Of course, you cannot... You know, ask a team like uh, you know New York City. You know that they have the coach, uh, the new coach, or Orlando. They just two years in the league to, to have their own identity. It takes a little while, but you know we work with the uh, with the time. I think it, it's gonna be it's gonna be better. Paolo, just before we let you go, I talked to a lot of agents in Italy and in Spain and in Germany, and a lot of their players wanted to come here once Jovinko signed in Kaká, Lamport, on and on, and Pirlo. And now are starting to think to themselves, do I want to come here? But I tell them you should want to come here because I talked to a lot of players that play in Serie B and Serie C that don't even get paychecks for months and months and months. You've played here, Paulo. 
You go to Orlando, there's 50,000. You go to Seattle, the same thing. You come to Toronto, Montreal, it's unbelievable. New York, on and on. What do you want to say to some of those players that are saying to themselves, maybe I don't want to come here because it's not for me? Well, I think, you know, I have to be honest with you. Now, I think it's easy to say I'd like to come in MLS because if you look at the paycheck of players like Jovinko, who doesn't want to come in this, in this league, you know? And I think that the, the reason for me to come here in, in this league wasn't, wasn't the money, was the, you know, the really pleasure to play in front of big crowds, you know? Here everything is really organized, and you see on a, a game day how exciting is, you know, the, the atmosphere at the stadium. And that's, that's, I think, is the most important thing for this league to, to have and to, to keep having, you know, this kind of enthusiasm and hopefully with more and more fans. And, of course, you know, you talk about this big player, but it's, it, I think it's too easy to say I want to come in MLS with that paychecks. It's good to come in MLS if you, if you want to, to really enjoy the, the game day, every game uh, you play. Paulo, uh, in 30 seconds or less, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I want to get your thoughts on Donnarumma. They believe he is the next Buffon. I believe he can actually start uh, playing some games for Italy, maybe in the next World Cup qualifying against some nations that aren't as strong and keep Buffon there. Do you believe a young guy like that can, can really handle the pressure of playing against big nations in, in big games? Well, you know, right now he is very young. He's very young, and we have to admit that. So I don't want to put a lot of pressure on him. I think we have, uh, you know, Gigi Buffon. Uh, maybe he will be available available for the next two seasons uh, with, you know, at the national team level. And then after that, I think Donnarumma, Donnarumma is going to be more ready. Right now, I think it's important for him to have experience with AC Milan. That is, you know, it's a big club. And after that, probably is going to be the, the number one for Italy for a long, long time. Paolo, listen, we thank you so much for making time out of your busy schedule. Good luck the rest of the way. And again, we thank you so much for making time. And we'll talk to you again sometime down the road, my friend. Perfect. Thank you very much to you guys. Paolo Tornegi, a Vancouver Whitecaps goalkeeper. He's had some real good games for them this year. Always love talking to Paolo. He's a guy that always understands the game inside out, whether MLS or Europe. Class act, true gentleman and a real important part of Vancouver Whitecaps. Hey, listen, thanks to Jordan Hamilton of TFC for joining us. Joey Calistri, Chicago Fire. Jorge Neves talking about Portugal on to the final. And as you just heard, Paulo Tornegi of Vancouver Whitecaps. Hey, we bring you the biggest and best names in MLS. Tonight, again, is no exception. Not one, not two, but three players from three different clubs. We'll do it again next week, Monday and Wednesday. We'll do it each and every week. We'll bring you big-time players from MLS coaches, we'll talk grassroots, we'll talk development, you name it, we do it here. We don't sugarcoat it. We're not that type of show that you think that others talk about. We talk about what you talk about out there. That's why people love tuning in here, thenextsportstar.com. To the three brothers, guys, have a great rest of the week. Thanks for all your help, and good luck to Portugal in the Euro final come Sunday, as well to either France or Germany. Catch you next week right here on Red Card. Good night. Always fight.